Today we are going to be uh, making the flying goose square and more specifically I'm actually going to be showing you the math behind the no waste method of the flying goose. If you aren't familiar with the flying goose, the goose is actually the dark triangle that you see and the sky is the two colors beside it. Now this method that I'm going to be showing you requires two square sizes. So if you already have some existing squares, for instance, I have here a three inch square, and I wanted to use this to make flying goose, I would need to know the size of the other square. I'm going to show you the math behind how to figure that out. Or if you have a desired finished size of a square, which I wanted on this one, I wanted four by eight, I'm going to show you how to figure out the math behind the two square sizes for that. Now this video wouldn't be complete without the tutorial showing you the assembly. So I will be doing that as well after we figure out all the math behind the squares. And just a little side note, I just wanted to let you know that by watching 30 seconds of ads, you're helping to pay for the time that we creators here on YouTube spend making these videos for you. If you subscribe, that's also a huge help. So if you're enjoying this and you want to learn more and you want to follow me on this journey of sewing and creating, then click the subscribe button. But for now, I'll see you on the other side. First of all, I just want to emphasize that if you don't have a book for your quilt squares and um, that shows you, you know, the squares that you've learned, how to make them, um, you need to start one. Um, keep all your notes in it. Um, I, I draw pictures in mine for, you know, showing me or reminding me how to make a certain square. Or, or you could actually use fabric and make miniature size ones that show you step by step. So any way you decide to do it, you really need to start a quilt journal, quilt um, book. All right, the flying goose square is actually a rectangle. And you can see here, this is a rectangle. The length is always double the, the height of the rectangle. So this is one, so this would be two. If it's too high, it's four long. If it's four high, it's eight long and so forth. If it's three high, it's six long. So length is always double the height. So this is going to be our first math. What size squares do we use for a desired finished size? So let's say we want a finished size of two by four. Okay, we're going to look first at the smaller number to get our small square size which is the two. All we need to do is add seven eighths of an inch to two. And so our small square needs to be two and seven eighths inches. For the large square, we will use the larger number, which is the four. And to that we add one and three quarters inches. So our large square needs to be five and three quarters inches. Now that works for any finished size that you want to use. Please make a chart in your quilt book um, that you can go back and refer to at any time. If there's a new size that I haven't, haven't done the math on yet, as soon as I do that size, I write it down in my book. So this particular uh, method of the flying goose is the no waste method. And this produces four flying geese. So when you get ready to make this, you will need four of the squares of the small size and one square of the large size. This flying goose is one by two. My small number is the one. All I need to do is add seven eighths inches. So my small squares will be one and seven eighths inches. The two is double the height of the square or the rectangle. To that you need to add one and three quarters inches. So my large square is one and three quarters inches. It, it works for every single size, um, for a desired finish size of your uh, flying goose. And you can see here in this particular one, I did use all four of the rectangles that the method produced 
and used it for the center of this journal. Okay, let's talk about the second math. As quilters, we all have our stash. And so you might go in there and say, well, I'd really like to use this square in making the flying goose. But how do I figure out the math for the other size square that I need? All right, so let's just say this is the small square size that we, would, we want to use this as the small square. This is a three inch square. How do I get the size for the large square? All you have to do is double the number of the three, which is six, and subtract half an inch. Whenever I do that, a new square size, I always write it down. So if this is a three inch square, the larger cut, remember, double, six inches, take away half an inch, five and a half inches. Now how do you do the math if you actually want this to be the large square to the flying goose, no waste method? This is three inches, so we're gonna do the opposite of what we did to figure it out if this was the smaller square. We're gonna take the three inches we're going to add back on the half an inch, making this three and a half. half. And remember, the small squares are half that size. So half of three and a half is one and three quarters inches. So this being a three inch, the small squares would need to be one and three quarters inches. Now if you look at your chart, those dimensions are very close, a little bit smaller, than the one by two flying goose. So this would be a pretty small flying goose, but that's really, um, you know, little ones are really fun to do. If you like to do that macro quilting, I mean, that's really fun to do if you're doing like needle books and other little miniatures like that. So anyway, I hope that explained that to you. Now let's get into how do you do the no waste method. All right. The no waste method of the flying goose. First of all, we have to decide our square size. And I decided to use for my small square, some three inch squares. And remember we need four of those. Now, if you remember the math, double this size. So this is three, double it, which would be six and take away half an inch, which would be five and a half inches. So that's the size of my large square. And of that, I only need one. Another thing, the other thing to take note of is that the large square is actually going to be the goose color or the goose fabric. So these are going to be my sky and this white is going to be my goose. All right, so what I did first is I took my ruler and a pencil and I drew a line from corner to corner on all four of my small squares. Now it doesn't really matter um, what you use to draw because that's going to actually be your cutting line so no one's going to see that all right so right sides together i'm going to take my large square and then take my small square and align the edges in the corner just like that all right and then on one side i'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away from that line that i drew But I'm also going to take a second square and align it on the opposite corner. And you can pin these if you want to. I find that they, they pretty much stay put. And if I need to, you know, align them a little bit better as I'm going, I, I'll do that as well. So let's see if I can get that so you can see it. There. So yes, they do overlap in the center. And that's okay. Um, they need to. Okay, and if you did your lines right, they should actually be a continuous line all the way across there. So going down one side, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch away on the left side of the line, and that's where I'm going to start. Zoom in so you can actually watch. And again, you can pin this if you need to, but just hold it in place keep going. I tend to sew a scant quarter and that's just me. There we go. All right, so there we have our first quarter inch stitch line. 
Now we're going to, and you can do this chain method too, but for now we're just doing one right now. So um, we're going to turn it around and do the quarter inch on the other side of the line. I have sewn a quarter of an inch away on both sides of the drawn line. You can see what that What I need there. to do is to cut right on that line. So, and you can use rotary cutter, scissors, whatever suits your fancy. Okay. And then for this part, you can actually just finger press. Just make sure you don't leave any pleats and don't distort because that's sewn on the bias. So we don't want to be pulling too much on it. But you can use your fingernail. Whatever you use for doing your finger pressing, you can use a roller, whatever. Or you can use your iron. <laughs> but I'm just going to finger press. So we have two more squares left. So what we're gonna do with those is we have a big white area in each of these and we're just going to take right sides together again and line this one up on this corner with the drawn line coming down in between the first two triangles that we put on there. And then, and then we're gonna do the same thing. So on both sides, a quarter of an inch away from the line. And we can do that the chain method again as well. And I just gotta make sure I got those lined up really well. And I can show that to you closer. And we can chain sew this together. And then we just need to turn this and come down the other side, quarter inch, quarter of an inch away from the line. All right, just gonna slip those apart. And then again, I'm just going to cut on the drawn line between the two stitch lines. And you can finger press this again. I, I kind of like to, and then I'll take it to the iron and give it a nice steam. I have my four flying geese. And um, what I like to do too then is just snip off all the little dog ears. Um, it's gonna help eliminate any bulk and make everything just a little flatter. And I'll go ahead and do that to all of them and come back. I did measure these and they do come out to be, um, with the seam allowances still, but they do come out to be uh, where they'll be just a hair over two by four, um, just like probably about an eighth of an inch larger. All right, the next part is actually sewing these together. And pretty much, you know, you don't want your geese flying <laughs> towards the ground, you want your geese flying to the sky. So, um, I'll be sewing these together in twos, like this. But what we're gonna be doing is we're actually gonna be sewing from the side that has the point where we can see the seam allowance, because this is gonna be really important as far as getting where we don't sew over our point or our, to our goose. And we want to see that really nice sharp point that we've created there. We want to be sure that we're sewing a top to a bottom. That's all that really matters. But we're going to like a point to um, the long bottom side of this triangle. But we'll center that in the middle. We'll center it and get it lined up. All the edges lined up as best as we can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to sew again from the looking at this side. And that's important because we're going to stay like a thread width away from that point when we stitch across this. Now what you can do is, it might not be exactly a quarter of an inch. So what you can do is you can, you know, lay your 
ruler, if you want, right across. Let's do it from this side so that we're doing equal. Yeah, my quarter inch lines up pretty good with that, although it's going to be a little bit skinny. I'll just use a pencil right now, but... And you could eyeball it, or you can use a pencil, or you could use your heat erase pen, whichever works for you. But you just want to be sure that you're not sewing across that triangle. You want that point right there. You want to stay just to the outside of that point right there so that you don't go across it. I think you get what I'm trying to say. Okay, and then we take the second one. There's no seamings that you have to worry about, which is really nice as far as right here. <laughs> so this time I'm just gonna go ahead and eyeball go across there. And again, I'm just gonna sew on just on this side of that point. Oh, I'll snip those apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. And actually I want my seam allowance to go towards, and you can see, that's the direction my seam allowance wants to go is towards the nose of the goose because there's less bulk there. So go ahead and press that, press it that way. But you can see we have a perfect point up there and that's what we want. We don't want to eliminate our points. Let's see how I did on this one. Well, let's first finger press our seam allowance open or up, turn it over and did a great job on that one too. We have a perfect point. All right, so we've got these two and now we just need to do the last one. <clears throat> Doing it the same way, I'm going to align these and your seam, your seam allowance might be skinnier than a quarter of an inch, and that's okay. All right, I have all, all uh, four of them sewn together. I'm going to go ahead and press these there real we go. quick. I hope this was helpful, um, maybe explained the this whole te technique a little bit more, and the math is, is helpful to you as well. I hope everyone is happy and healthy, and until next time, have a great one. Bye for now.